Hey there, how's it going everybody? Dan here with PlantAbundance.com. Just want to give you all a progress report as to the aeroponics cloning machine and how things are going. So you can see we got tremendous root development on this batch of cuttings. But I want to share with you a little background on the first batch I did, which wasn't so much of a success. This is after a week. And as you can see, there's no roots on this batch. And besides that, you could also smell that things weren't going right. Smelt quite rotten, to be honest with you. So what I went ahead and did with that batch is I tried to salvage these cuttings by cutting off the bottom of each one as they were practically mush. And I went ahead and just plugged those into some one gallon containers with some potting mix in hopes to, you know, save a few of these. And I'm happy to report most of them did survive. Had a few die off and just pulled those out, but we were able to rescue the majority of these, so I'm happy about that. So now I just want to share with you some of the things I did differently on this second batch that gave me the success in hopes that anybody who's watching this who's looking to perhaps go forward with their first batch of aeroponics can bypass the same mistakes. So first off, one of the things that I did is I added in this aquarium heater into the system and I had the heater dialed up a bit too high. I had it at 75 degrees and somebody had pointed out to me that the pump that's working in the system 24 hours a day pumping that water is also generating some heat. So that was bringing me way too close to the threshold and then passing that 80 degree mark. And at that point, you're more than likely going to lose all your plants in the system. So moving forward, I went ahead and, and left out the aquarium heater on this next batch. Now, one of the reasons for that is that I'm propagating these cuttings indoors in a climate controlled environment. And there really is just no need to have the heater into the system now, if you were on the East Coast or perhaps the Midwest and you got a system down in your basement where it can get really cold or even freezing, then I definitely still recommend using an aquarium heater in that situation. But instead of dialing it up so high, I'd probably keep it somewhere around 60, 65 and just monitor it and just know that that aquarium pump is going to be generating heat and warming up the water as well. So the second thing that I did was to ensure that the pH levels of the water that I'm using in the system were correct. So you're going to want to have a pH level somewhere between 5.5 and 6.3 for an aeroponics system. And you're also going to want to take into account that over time, the longer you have the machine running, the pH levels can rise. So you'd be best off with a pH level on the lower end of that spectrum. So after taking a quick test, I was able to determine my pH level was right around 6. So that looked good. So next, before getting my next batch going, I gave the cloner and all its components a very thorough wash. And then per the instructions that came with the machine, I went ahead and added water and bleach into the system and let it run for 20 minutes to go ahead and disinfect the entire machine. So I just wrapped the top with some saran wrap and used some painter's tape to secure that down. That was just so that the water wouldn't splash all around as the machine was running. I also used this as an opportunity to look into the machine and make sure that all the water emitters were spraying water and nothing was clogged in the system. Everything looked good there. Next, I went ahead and took the cuttings just as I did in the first video using my grafting knife. And another thing I did differently was I drilled a hole in the middle of each one of these neoprene inserts. I felt like the fitting of these were just too tight and suffocating on these young cuttings. So then 24 hours before running this new batch and filling the machine with water, I went ahead and filled this glass vessel with some tap water and allowed that the full 24 hours to off gas all the chlorine that's in the water. That can be detrimental to clones and also seedlings. From there I went ahead and plugged all my cuttings into the grid. So I also took this as an opportunity to try cuttings from several different plants so I could see if I'd have success with each one of them rooting. So I've got some dino kale tree collard hybrid, some merit collards, some tree collards, and I even tried a few cuttings of ashitaba. From there I just placed the system back under the LED grow lights on the grow light stand and plugged it in. And here's some pictures from just five days later. If you look closely you can see the formation of roots starting to take place. And also there was no smell coming from the system at all. So I was feeling really good about the chances of success here. And then three days later, so eight days total, cuttings from every type of plant other than the ashitaba had some root formation on it. So I had a feeling the ashitaba wasn't going to take, but I gave it a try. So I'm very excited about this. To get roots developing in the past with the collard cuttings, it could take weeks, if not months. 
So to have roots form like this in just a total of eight days is really amazing. So from there I just took some moist organic potting mix and I put it in these 16 ounce plastic recyclable party cups. And I just give those roots a quick dust with some mycorrhizae, which is going to help the plant develop strong, vigorous roots and also aid in the uptake of water and nutrients. Then I just top it off with a bit more potting mix and just give it a nice good soak down with some rainwater. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this video finds you and finds you well out in the world and out in your garden planting more abundance in your life. Take care everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.